nearly a century after its inception, there's now an ambitious plan to restore the historic Hejaz railway line. Damascus lays claim to being the world's oldest continuously inhabited city. But in the present climate, it's unlikely to be inundated by foreign visitors. These days, the Hejaz Railway begins here at Khartoum Station on the outskirts of Damascus. Hassan Kharat, a Syrian tour guide, is leading a group of European tourists around the old workshops. This is Syria's selling point. A spectacular ride as the old train winds its way along one of the most beautiful stretches of the Hejaz through the picturesque Yarmouk Valley. This line attracted the attention of British Lieutenant Colonel T.E. Lawrence the famous Lawrence of Arabia and his band of Bedouin guerrillas during the First World War. And this was their target, the main Yarmouk Valley Bridge, an enormous steel structure spanning the river below. Thankfully for these train buffs, the attempt by Lawrence to blow up the bridge was foiled. Compared with Syria, which is struggling to revive its stretch of the Hejaz, in Jordan, it's full steam ahead. It was once a joint project of the entire Islamic world, and maybe we may, we may bring people together again. We want to be ready with everything. The tracks have to be restored. The station buildings have to be restored. The infrastructure updated. And September 1st, 2008, we may celebrate the centennial of the Hedgehog Railway in a decent manner because it was opened on September 1st. And the commercial venture is not without government support. The push to restore the Hejaz enjoys the royal patronage of Jordan's Prince Hassan bin Talal. As far as desert tourism is concerned, I think it's uh, very important. People love to go to uh, Petra. I think that is a very virtuous uh, goal to hope to achieve. The historic Hejaz Railway is the legacy of the Ottomans, 400 years of Turkish rule. By the end of the First World War, the Ottoman Empire and the Hejaz Line lay in ruins. of Arabia that his Bedouin fighters would be immortalised. <laughs> Director David Lean's Academy Award winning movie starring Peter O'Toole as the legendary Lawrence of Arabia is a screen classic.
Today, the Bedouins still launch the occasional attack on the Hejaz railway. Like their forefathers, the Bedouin are expert horsemen. But unlike their ancestors, they want to preserve this line, not destroy it. These desert dwellers are putting on shows for the tourists. And today, the victim of the Bedouin kidnappers is tour guide Reem Bandak. طبيعي البدو هم هم اهم جزء في هاي الادفنتشر في هاي التجربه لانه هم هم اللي كانوا موجودين بايام العثمانيين وهم اللي كانوا موجودين كمان اللي اللي قضوا على وجود العثمانيين في في الاردن وقاموا بالثوره فهم مثال كبير لكل انسان حابب يعيش هاي التجربه فانه يشوف البدو يتعايش معهم ويشوف كيف كانت حياتهم تقريبا بهذاك الوقت These men are direct descendants of the warriors who rode with Lawrence They're members of the feared Hawaitat tribe In the movie Anthony Quinn played Ayudi Abu Tai the legendary chief of the Hawaitat who Lawrence described as the greatest fighting man in North Arabia. Never seen a man killed with a sword before. Why don't you take a picture? Tayeb al Huaytat is the great grandson of the Arab warrior. <laughs> Much of the track in southern Jordan and across the border in neighbouring Saudi Arabia still lies in ruin 90 years after the Arab Revolt. And now there's another threat to the line. So Yuli, how much damage did the treasure hunters do to the railway? Well, they did a lot of damage. You see these holes before winter came, they were much deeper, meters deeper, and they were even reaching below the tracks and sleepers started to break. We started backfilling and... Ulrich Belwald is a Swiss archaeologist turned entrepreneur who's leading a European consortium to restore the Hejaz railway. Uh, who came with a small uh, excavator to make these holes? At this station, south of Amman, Bedouin using bulldozers have dug huge holes in the search for mythical Turkish gold. There are even Jordanians going to uh, downtown Istanbul where people are known having the very map where these uh, treasures are buried and they pay a lot of money and come here and they are damaging uh, seriously our tracks. Further to the south, climbing from Aqaba up through the desert passes of the Hejaz Mountains, this steam train is also driving Jordan's bid to attract tourists. On this trip, there's even a theatrical touch for where Zubi's grandfather actually served in the Turkish army. I'm actually dressed as an Ottoman soldier, a Turkish soldier, and who will be guarding a train like this in the days 1916 when the Great Arab Revolt started. And that's how 
the uniform used to look. But the jewel in the Jordanian crown is the plan to connect Petra to the Hejaz line. One of the draw cards of this desert is the Rose Red City, carved into the towering rock by the now extinct Nabataeans more than 2,000 years ago. For centuries, this stunning city was on the main commercial camel route linking the Persian Gulf in the east to Gaza on the Mediterranean in the west. You know, Petra is the highlight of tourism in Jordan. It's the most attractive site. And we have to use Petra as a magnet. We will do advertising PR showing that in the future people, if they wish, we may bring them to Petra for a big part of the entire trip by steam trains. The Jordanian enthusiasm is not matched by neighbouring Saudi Arabia. Jordan's Prince Hassan is critical of Saudi authorities who fear reviving the Hejaz railway might bring non-Muslims to the Holy Lands. Well, the traditional view, I think, of the conservative establishment is that this might be a railway of seditious ideas or seditious practices. But if we're talking about pilgrimage, um, you are coming with a mindset of wanting to perform a religious uh, ritual, and uh, I don't see any uh, danger in that. The idea was never for it to remain destroyed but for it to continue as a bridge of ideas and as a bridge of peace. Despite Saudi indifference, the Jordanians are keen to capitalise on their history. For hundreds of generations, the Bedouin have driven their camel trains through the Hejaz in the heart of Arabia. This is 21st century Bedouin business. When Lawrence of Arabia led his desert caravan into Wadi Rum, he said everyone fell silent, awed by what he described as the vast echoing and godlike features of this sand, basalt and granite landscape. It was here Lawrence gathered the Bedouin tribes into a fighting force against the Turks. It was also the place he conceived his memoirs, The Seven Pillars of Wisdom. The Hejaz is vital to the Bedouins' future. But if this latest project turns out to be more fanciful than feasible, then much of one of the world's great railways seems destined to remain buried beneath the sands of Arabia. I'm going to go to the hospital and I'm going to go to the hospital and I'm going to go to the hospital.